For my current events project, my topic was human rights, and I focused on rights that were being lacked in areas. Those rights were dealing with immigrants, labor, gays, and guns. The first thing I'm going to address is the lack of labor laws and how that is affecting people around the world. With a lack of labor laws, people can be working in dangerous conditions, being too young to work, and working too much. This is a map dealing with child labor, showing at what level they are at risk in certain areas. This is also dealing with child labor, giving a percentage of the children working or not working. This is a graph showing what the children's work would be, and agriculture, hunting, forestry, and fishing has a majority of it. This video is an example of a situation where there are better conditions needed. In this, it shows how kids are working into rough conditions in tobacco farms. These child workers get very sick working 50 to 60 hours being exposed to harmful pesticides. Child tobacco workers told us they hurt themselves using sharp tools and working around machinery and that they faced other dangers. Todos, 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 casi la mayoría, se van sobre arriba, arriba de los bones, que son unos 10, 15, 20, 30 metros de altura. Uno a veces no se fija uno y pisa uno más y puede uno venirse hacia abajo. O sea, no pasa de un accidente, quizás podría ser, pues hasta perder la vida. Eso es, eso es muy, o sea, es muy fatal. Y... They told us they were utterly exhausted, most working 50 to 60 hours a week, often in extreme heat. Some said their employers didn't give them drinking water or access to bathrooms. As you could see, those working conditions were not suitable for kids, but that isn't the only problem. Another problem is discrimination of gay people. It is not right for them to be discriminated because of their sexuality, and here are some of the impacts that discrimination has on them. A lot of people in our country aren't aware of the high rates of discrimination that LGBT people face. I feel like that would be very scary and very stressful and very disturbing to be in a place where I would have to hide who I was. Parallel to that, they think there's already a law in place that would take care of any inc inc incidents of discrimination. We need, as advocates, to do a lot of work of educating the public about the scope of the problem. One of the things that we don't talk about as much is the compound effect of being discriminated against because you're gay and also because you might be a woman or because you might be African American. We know that we are more likely to be unemployed or more likely to um, not have health insurance because we have insecure jobs that you know we could be fired from at any point in time. For someone like myself who you know people can tell I'm gay right away it's a different experience than someone that would be able to hide it. It would just make me very uncomfortable and I don't think I would work as well. really the need for a strong federal national law to come in, provide equal protections to all workers across the country, and also to, to signal to businesses what their actual responsibilities are. Because we have this kind of weird patchwork of some states, some cities, some businesses having these policies, and it's not always clear to businesses what their legal responsibilities are. The Employment Non-Discrimination Act, or ENDA, would require that most workplaces have sexual orientation and gender identity as characteristics that are protected in their workplace non-discrimination statements. Most workplaces have protections related to race and gender and religion. Now sexual orientation and gender identity would um, be required to be added to those protections. And there have been cases where you know um, heterosexual workers who aren't transgender have been you know accused, um, if they're women, of not being feminine enough. And if they're men, they've been accused of not being masculine enough. ENDA and its protections would allow these workers to have legal standing and recourse against the employer as well. One of the main reasons for this discrimination is because people are taking it from a religious standpoint and those opinions are protected by religious freedom. This next video goes more into depth with that. 
Should it be legal for a business to refuse service to gays and lesbians because of religious beliefs? This is the substance of an amendment passed by the Arizona State Legislature, and the legislature says yes, and because of that, it's generated huge controversy. Supporters say the law just protects religious freedom. Those against it say it is a license to discriminate. Let's debate. Joining us from Washington, D.C. is Kelly Fedorik. She's an attorney for the Alliance Defending Freedom, which was involved in drafting the amendment. Counselor, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Steve, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. It's good to have you. You can call me Steve, but my name is Chris. It doesn't matter. Everybody calls me Steve. I don't know why. Let me ask you this, Counselor. Uh, the main proposition for why this is okay, in your opinion, is that it's an existing law and just an extension of a right that already exists. Explain. Well, look, there's been a lot of, of lies and misinformation spread about this bill. And what this bill, this bill is not about denying people services. Um, what this bill is, is advocating for is basic freedom, ensuring that everyone in this human dignity is respected and that the government is not allowed to force or to coerce or compel anyone to violate their sincerely held beliefs or to go against their conscience. This is to basically keep the government from discriminating um, against people of faith. Right. But fundamentally, what it allows, the mechanism, is to allow an individual business owner to refuse to do business with somebody on the basis of it offending their religious beliefs if they do conduct that business. So, for example, if I come to you and I say, hey, you sell flowers. I want you to sell flowers to me for my marriage to another man. You can say no, correct? Well, there's a difference. Again, there's a basic difference between denying someone a cup of coffee or a piece of pizza um, or selling someone a pencil versus forcing someone to use their creative ability to create, create, uh, to create a message, to support an event, to participate or endorse an idea that goes against their, their fundamental beliefs. There's a, there's a big distinction in America. The government should not force us to ever use our business, use our talents to go against our, our, what we fundamentally believe in. And there's a big difference, like I said, between selling a pencil and forcing someone to draw a mural uh, that portrays this. I mean, think about, for example, we would never, we would not force a Muslim to participate in a Quran burning ceremony. We wouldn't ask a black photographer and force them to go take a picture of a KKK event. This is America. In America, we should be able to live freely and not be forced to support Counselor. or endorse ideas. The next issue I'm going to address is immigrant rights. Immigrants from places such as Mexico and all around are being discriminated in workplace areas. Here is a video showing how it can impact their lives. You're comfortably working and suddenly people come in with guns and badges and you're like, wow, <laughs> what, what did anybody do? The day of the raid, I wasn't given a notice to appear, so I had to go back two weeks later and I was detained due to exercising my right to remain silent. Yo tengo una hija que acaba de salir ahorita de la high school y va a entrar a college, pero en base a esto ya nos quedamos sin trabajo y, y ya no pudo, no puede ir ahorita, hasta ahorita no okay. puede ir al college por no tener los medios económicos ahorita para, pues para mandarla. Mm -hmm. Y es frustrante todo esto, es traumatizante tanto como para uno de padre y para los hijos también. Afecta, nos afecta a todos en general. The lack of immigrant rights has been a problem for a while now, and most are trying to make a difference. And support from organizations such as ACLU is helping a lot. This last part of the video helps show how they are fighting for their rights. If we let employers discriminate against workers, everybody loses. I believe that in this country, everyone deserves a fair wage for a fair day's work. I've been here my whole life. And to me, this is my country. I want my son to grow up here. I want my son to get his education here. And this is, I think this is the place to be. And I'm gonna fight for that. I'm gonna fight for the right to stay here. My last topic is gun rights. Recently, there has been an increase in gun laws and restrictions. Majority of people now think gun control is too strict. Here's a chart showing whether people want less strict gun laws or more strict gun laws. Over the time, it shows that people have started to want less strict gun laws. The problem with stricter gun control is that only the law-abiding citizens would follow it and the criminals would still have guns. This cartoon helps explain what happens when stricter gun control is put in.
This next video helps explain the meaning of the cartoon. Mayor Bloomberg is using the tragedy in Aurora, Colorado to push forward his anti-gun agenda. He wants to get rid of the Second Amendment. He wants to take guns out of the hands of law-abiding citizens. He went so far as to go on TV the other day and tell police officers all over the nation they should go on strike until his anti-gun agenda is pushed forward. Are you freaking kidding me? Let me tell you something about what happened in Aurora, Colorado. It was a tragedy, but it was also an isolated incident. Think about it. How many times do you turn on TV and hear about a guy with no criminal record shooting and killing somebody? Maybe once every 10 years. In contrast, how many times do you turn on TV and hear about a guy with a long criminal history shooting and killing somebody. Maybe every 10, 20 minutes, maybe Mayor Bloomberg should concentrate more on stricter criminal control and he won't have to worry about gun control. You ask any cop in the country how the system works, he'll tell you. He arrests the guy for assault and battery. The guy goes to jail for a couple of months, he's back on the streets. He arrests the same guy for stabbing somebody. He goes to jail for a couple of months, he's back on the street. He arrests the same guy for shooting and killing somebody, then they put him away for a long time. If you would have just put him away after the stabbing, after the assault and battery, he wouldn't have been on the street. He wouldn't have had the opportunity to get a gun and he wouldn't have the opportunity to shoot somebody. Maybe Mayor Bloomberg should concentrate more on enforcing the laws we already have and stop wasting our time coming up with new ones. I mean, you do that, you wouldn't have to worry about gun control. People would be giving their guns away. They'd be selling them to buy pictures of rainbows because we'd be living in a freaking utopia. The only thing strict the gun laws are going to do is keep guns out of the hands of people who obey the law because newsflash, criminals don't obey the law. I don't care. With all these gun restriction and laws, people have started fighting for their rights and protested. The Big Apple, business as usual. A few hours by train, the Empire State Capitol. As the United States remains divided when it comes to what to do with guns in this country after a recent series of shootings, hundreds of anti-gun control protesters gather outside the state capitol building in Albany. Here, the toughest state law on firearms in the U.S. after the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting, the SAFE Act, was passed a month ago. And those whose guns are at stake are far from happy. Do I look like a terrorist? Do I look like a fanatic? Among other provisions, the new state law bans weapon sales over the web, restricts ammo magazines to seven bullets, includes stricter background checks, and regular recertification. Cuomo signed that law in the middle of the night without at least three days for a debate, not allowing the people to read it. These protesters say their Second Amendment right to bear arms under the U.S. Constitution is being stepped on by the legislators. They need to smarten up and listen and get the garbage out of their ears and listen to what the people are saying. Gun owners believe politicians are looking for criminals in the wrong places. I've been a gun owner for 30, 40 years and now some of the guns I have in my locker are now illegal. I've never had a uh, um, parking ticket in my life. There's nothing wrong with good law-abiding citizens having firearms. It's a, it's a necessity because this legislation is not going to stop hardened criminals from possessing firearms. It's not going to stop drug dealers. It's not going to stop murderers. It's not going to stop rapists. So what is the answer as the U.S. struggles to find common ground on where the gun debate should take the country next? I think severe punishment. Anyone that does a crime with a gun, severe. No slap on the hand, no parole, no plea bargain. And that will stop what you see in this country. While the position of these gun advocates is clear, what remains to be seen is whether the U.S. as a whole can ever come to a compromise. Anastasia Churkina, RT, Albany. That is the end of my current events project. Thank you for watching.